Welcome to Chapter 24, Commanding the Imperatives. So far we've looked at the indicative forms in all its tenses. We've wrestled with the participles and played with the infinitives. And last chapter we got down two of the moods, the subjunctive and a little bit with the optative. In this chapter we'll finish off the moods with the imperatives usually a mood of command or entreaty. And the good thing is it won't be all that difficult because I think we understand it conceptually already. But before we jump into the imperatives, let's go through the Lord's Prayer. Say this first part of the Lord's Prayer with me. Pater heimon ha en tois uranois hagiasteto ta anamasu. Altheto he basileia su, genetheto ta thalema su. And now the second part. Hos en ura no kai epi geis. Tan ar tan he mon tan epiusian das he min se maran. Say this third part of the Lord's Prayer with me. Kai afes he min ta afe lema ta he mon hos kai he me sa fe ka men toi sa fe le tai se mon. And now the final section. Kai me esa nen case he mas es pe ras man a la rusai he mas apa tu pane ru he. In order to introduce the imperative, let's run back through the moods that we've already worked with. We said that the indicative was the mood of perceived or projected reality. Not necessarily reality, as liars use it as well, but perceived or projected reality. Basically, it's our norm. There's like 15,000 of these, and so it's the most frequent. It just describes historical events and other usages. The subjunctive is what we looked at last chapter. It's the mood of possibility, the may or might kind of mood. The optative goes one step further in kind of a wish kind of a thing, oh may he be. And we said that the subjunctive was largely taking over the role of the optative, and the optative was dying out in the Koine period or Hellenistic period. The imperative is the mood of command to one that's a peer or to one that's under a person, but entreaty to one that's over you. So it's used for command and entreaty, and we'll see how that works in this chapter. Now again, with the subjunctives, the imperative, when it goes to the aorist and present, is not tense-oriented, but rather aspect-oriented, and so it's not connected to time per se. The present will be the continuous form that deals with durative action, iterative action, the notion of immediacy and presence. The parade is right in front of you, and you're participating and seeing the events unfold right in front of you, the foregrounding tense. The aorist will take on its usual undefined or background, kind of from up on the 10th story, looking down on the parade as more of a background, it happened kind of a tense. And so both the present and the aorist forms will be used in the imperative. Now in English, the imperative is usually only used with the second person. So when we say, go or come here, we know that there's an implied you to attach to it, so it's a second person, either singular or plural. In Greek, however, both the second and third person can go into the imperative form. So you say, you go, or go, and it's implied you, singular or plural, but then they also have a third person, which is a little odd to us in English, but functions the same way, basically. It's let her go, 
or let him go, or let them go. Third person singular or third person plural. And so in the imperative, there will be no first person command because it's pretty hard to command yourself. Although you do remember, there is a cohortative subjunctive, let us or let me, which you can use for the first person, but you have to jump over to the cohortative subjunctive. So it'll be second person and third person. The first person will be absent in the imperative mood. So we've just eliminated one third of our work as far as learning endings go and just need to focus on the second and third person, singular and plural. With only two tense forms, present and aorist, this isn't going to be bad after all. There are three usages of the imperative that we need to be aware of. The first one's obvious, and that's the imperative is used as a command. You go, you put, you lift, you study, let him study, let them study, etc., where it's a direct command. The second usage is with the negative, may plus the imperative. You realize that may is used with the moods and ooh with the indicative. And so may with the imperative is called a prohibition. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Those kind of things are prohibitions. Now you can also do the prohibition, however, with ooh plus the indicative or even may with the subjunctive. So there's actually three ways of stating prohibitions, but one of them is may with the imperative. The last way the imperative is used is as an entreaty form. So if one is addressing a superior, one will use the imperative form, and it's understood that it's entreaty and not a command. It's a kind of pretty please kind of thing although you still use the imperative. So that's called the entreaty form, and it can be used in prayer like that in other ways when one addresses a superior. So three ways to look at the imperative, command, prohibition when there's a ne negative, and entreaty. Now here's a little chant that'll give us the endings of the imperative. First, for the present, and kind of think of somebody learning how to tap dance here, and it's talking about toes, tapping toes. And so it'll be, for the present, e, toe to toe san. That's the active forms, endings. And then the middle passive endings are u, to so san. And so putting those two together, e, toe to toe san, u, to to san. Pretend you have a lisp on that second one, u tho th so san. And those are the endings for the present. One more time, e to 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 san, u tho th so san. Now the first aorist endings give us a similar tap dance. So we have the active forms, n to 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 san, i to to so san, and t to 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 san for the passive forms. So you have the active, the middle, and the passive forms here. So one more time with the aorist, n to 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 san, i to 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 san, and t to 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 san. You'll notice, by the way, that the active and the passive forms both have that to 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 san just vary in the active second person singular, N and T, the only difference there. Now let's put this all together, and it's E to 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 san, U to 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 san, N to 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 san, I to 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 san, T to 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 san. And one more time, E to 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 san, U to 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 san, N to 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 san, I to to so san, T to 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 san. So the real difficult part with this is remembering the E, U, N, I, T to get started with and then the others flow off of that. So this is a chant for the imperative. 
Learn it so you can give orders even in your sleep. Here is the paradigm for the continuous present imperative. This, only the second and third person are listed because there is no first person. It's hard to pretty hard to command yourself. So here are the forms. Lua, lueto, lueta, luetosan. For the middle passive present or continuous imperative is luu, luesto, luesta, luestosan. Do you recognize the e to 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 san in the active and u tho so so san in the middle passive? Just taking the endings off. This is translated you loose or let him loose in the third person, be loosed in the passive, and let her be loosed in the passive, loose for yourself in the middle, or the middle could be just translated active sometimes. Loose for yourself, let him loose for himself, another middle for the benefit of. So this is the present forms, and you see that's not too bad. Just remember the e to 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 san, u to to so san, and you got it. The first aorist forms, or undefined imperative, is second person, singular, lusan, lusato, lusata, Lusato san. And the middle form is Lusai, Lusasto, Lusasta, and Lusaso san. And you can remember the endings N to 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 san and I so to so san. And these are translated, you loose, or let him loose, or loose for yourself, or let him loose for himself, or in the middle just translated flat out active, emphasizing the participation of the subject in the action of the verb. So these are pretty easy if you just remember the end to 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 san. Chant, you'll have these forms down. Now for the first aorist undefined imperative for the passive forms, you have Luthati, Lutheto, Lutheta, Luthetosan. And so this is our endings, the T, To, to to san that we had before. Translated is be loosed, or let him be loosed, or let them be loosed, or something like that. Notice the the, the theta, eta, typifies this, uh, this passive form, which is no problem. We've seen that before. The second aorist, or undefined imperative, works off the base form lepo, I leave. And as we saw before, the second aorist actually uses the present tense endings, the e to 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 san, the u to 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 san endings, that we have with the present. So it's fairly easy. The lepo, the root form, goes to lip. So it's lipe, lipeto, lipete, lipestosan. And the middle form is lipu, lipesto, lipesta, lipestosan. And it would be translated the same way as the other aorist. You leave, let him leave, leave for yourself in the middle, or just flat leave. So the hardest thing with the second aorist is going to be remembering the base root form, because there's always this root shift that you've got to be aware of in the second aorist. And we've got our second aorist passive here. And you see the forms are... Lefthete, Lefthato, Lefthete, Lefthetosan. And you'll notice that the theta eta is stuck in there with our T to 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 san form endings. And then you notice that the P goes up to a phi because of the volatilization of the theta being next to the P. 
Translation, be gone. Let it be gone. Passive kind of translation for these. So just get the chant down and these endings will become apparent. When you see them, you'll recognize them. Just remember the tap dance chant. Now there's one other form you probably figured was coming, and that is the imperative of Amy. It's isthi, esto, este, and estosan. And this form, uh, the B as far as uh, imperative, will also go with the periphrastics. Do you remember with the participle forms? And this is how they'll indicate the mood in conjunction with that participle form being an imperatival mood. They'll use this imperative of a me. You'll also notice the form este looks awful familiar, and so you'll have to use context on that second plural to tell whether it's a regular indicative or whether it's a imperative. So this is our old friend Amy. Should be no problem, except for that second person singular is a little odd. Here are a couple imperative translations just to get us started. Lege autois erkestha kai apsestha elthan un kai edan. Lege autois, he said to them, taking this historical present, erkestha, come, second person plural imperative, come, kai apsestha, that's the future of horao. You will see. Come and you will see. Elthen, a, un, is then they came, kai edan, and they saw. The second example is lege auto ha Jesus, por you ha huyas su ze. Epistusen ha anthropos. Jesus said to him, Por you, and there's our imperative. Notice it's capitalized, indicating this is a direct quote. Por you, okay, go, your son, Ze, lives from Zao, and it's the present form, he lives. Epistusen ha anthropos, the man believed. So just a couple examples of the imperative and how it's used by Jesus in both of these examples. Here's the vocabulary for chapter 24. The first word is agapetas a an. And it means beloved. The second word is grammatus. And it means scribe. The third word is daimonion. And it means demon. The fourth word is dakeo, and it means I think. The fifth word is daxadzo, and it means I glorify or honor. The sixth word is exo. And it means outside. The seventh word is erotao. And it means I ask. The eighth word is thelema. And it means will. 
The ninth word is thranos, and it means throne. And the tenth word is aras, and it means mountain.